Hello folks and welcome to Men and Motors. I'm personally ticking a huge box off my bucket list today because I'm here at the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles, one of the coolest motor museums in the United States, if not the world. And uh, to start things off, we've got the prototype Tesla Semi here. Um, this is capable of three to 500 miles of range, naught to 60 in 20 seconds. Obviously it's a big thing. And uh, it's got top speed of 65 miles an hour. So uh, there we go. Not many people have seen one of these. Well, you're now seeing the first one, the prototype. Let's get in the museum and we're gonna show you some absolutely amazing vehicles in this video. So get yourself a nice cup of tea, wrap up nice and warm and enjoy. So to get you started at Peterson, we're gonna go through some of the movie cars and we're starting off with this 1976 Chevy Camaro Z28. You may recognize it as Bumblebee from the Transformers movie. And then moving over here, we've got the more modern version. It's the 2007 version. Um, it's the Camaro concept prop car for Bumblebee. So yeah, Bumblebee is portrayed by two different Camaros, of course not by a Volkswagen Beetle like he's supposed to be, but regardless. <laughs> uh, 78 Camaro, that is all original, you know, of course made to intentionally look rusty and old, but all the parts are actually original, as opposed to the 2007 Camaro, which if you look closely is not a Camaro at all. If you look at the uh, discs, those aren't real brakes. There's no caliper on them, right? Uh, these windshield wipers aren't real. These door handles aren't real. It's because those, you know, those disc brakes aren't real because they're covering up drum brakes. Because this is a 1978 Pontiac, they put a nice looking fake Camaro body on top. And the reason why they had to use one real one and one fake one was because the fake one, well, the real version of this car hadn't come out yet. Uh, most cars debut at car shows, right? Where only people watching are car journalists and car nerds, which is great, but doesn't get a ton of attention outside of the car world. This car debuted in the 2007 Transformers movie, and go figure, it was a huge hit. People even paid extra to get the Bumblebee trim level, which was just this paint scheme that you see here. And so as long as it looked good enough on camera, that was good enough for them. But if you really look closely, it's clearly not a real Camaro. And so uh, this was the first purchase they made after opening the museum. Was this an actual movie car from the movie? Yes, or all of these are actual movie cars and most okay. of them are the A car, the hero car. So the car that's yep. gonna be using most of the shots, the most detailed one, because it's also needed for interior shots. Same with like the DeLorean you'll see downstairs. Yep. But this one, it's really interesting so how it was made. So the guy who made it, I actually got to meet him recently. He, you know, sculpted this out of clay, about yay big. And Tim Burton goes, I love it. How the hell does Batman get in the car? Yeah. And uh, the designer goes, to be honest, I didn't really think about it. So what they had to end up doing was making it like a fighter jet. This whole thing lifts yeah, up, yeah. slides on forward. Now the way the car was actually built, obviously this is all custom fiberglass body. The chassis is two Chevy Impala chassis welded together. Uh, some of the other ones were half Chevy Impala, half Plymouth Cutlass, but either way, there are always two cars. Chevy small block uh, 350, carbureted by the way, Batman didn't even opt for fuel wow. in Jackson, so kind of funny. Um, <laughs> the turbo fans from a bomber jet from the 60s, yeah. the jet on the back is from a Harrier jet from the 80s, of course they don't actually work. The tail lights, if you go look, are very distinctly Ferrari tail lights, yeah. and the headlights are Honda Civic headlights turned upside down. Um, and then, you know, filming with this car wasn't easy either, you know, of course it doesn't turn very well, it doesn't yeah. move very fast. Um, and getting Michael Keaton in and out wasn't easy either because, if you've seen the movie, he kicks about this high, he can't turn <laughs> yeah. his neck without turning his whole body, right? So he ultimately, the first few days of shooting before they just realized, just make him wear pants, yeah. where he's lowered in with a crane. And then on the first day, they lower him in and get ready because it's the most useless fun fact you're ever gonna learn. Good. They lower him in, they close the door and the tips of his bat ears got snipped off. They didn't measure the ears on the costume <laughs> with the with the door itself. And so they had to make a new cowl. Every time he is in the Batmobile, his ears are about half an inch, three quarters of an inch shorter yeah. than when he is outside of the Batmobile. Yeah. And that is the least use, the least useful fun fact you'll ever learn. But it is a fun fact. Yes, and you'll never forget it. You know, you yeah. can do, read all the placards in here. You'll never forget that his ears are yeah. a little bit shorter. I here. was like, 11 or something when this movie came out so for me this is the batmobile and i still think to this day it's the coolest one i think it's all. the best looking one yeah i mean there have been some cool ones since the, the tumbler is cool but it's just a big tank yeah i quite like the new one from the last movie last year where it's like a corvette with a rocket on it yeah uh just because it, it this is so high tech and it has machine guns and grappling hooks and you know all this stuff and the other one's just like oh it's a big muscle car and we put a we put a jet on the exactly back and it yeah do anything else. yeah uh, also gas caps from an 18 wheeler. That's some other stuff. Oh, that's cool. I mean, it's all just hodgepodge together, you know? Yeah. In a really cool way. But nice. Yeah, 
One of my favorite ones. Love it. Yeah. Another very cool movie car here, 1958 Plymouth Fury, better known as Christine. Just check this one out. All you Stephen King fans uh, will be very jealous of me, I'm sure, but a real piece of history here. And uh, yeah, what a car. You might recognize this 1966 Ford Thunderbird as the car from Thelma and Louise, and that's because it is. This one was used in most of the driving shots in the movie, where it was mostly sat on the back of a trailer and being pulled, but obviously it gave the impression that they were driving the car. As you can tell from the condition, it's not the one that they used to chuck over the cliff at the end of the movie. So this is a 1981 DeLorean. It's actually the 1981 DeLorean from Back to the Future. And this is the hero car. This is the one that's used in most of it. It's not a prop car, not a stunt car. This is the one that they're in in most of the movie. Um, this is not just from Back to the Future. It's also from Back to the Future 2 and Back to the Future 3. They use the same car throughout. I cannot believe I'm standing next to it right now. Absolutely adore those movies. I did growing up, I still do to this day. Uh, what a thing. And everything's in here that you'd expect, obviously can't film too much of it because we're a bit restricted as to where we can get to but let's just say everything you saw in the movie is in that car it looks incredible i cannot believe i'm here i need to change my underwear some of the other epic cars we've got here from sort of tv and movies the 1976 grand torino that was in almost every series of starsky and hutch uh, we've got 1966 bat cycle from batman and then we've got one of my favorite kids cars ever uh, one of my favorite tv shows as a kid we've got kit from knight rider and once again this was driven in knight rider it's not prop car it's one of the hero cars so kit's actually a 1982 firebird pontiac trans am and uh, although obviously this is the the car from the screen everything on it is perfect as you would expect i have tried talking to it and it doesn't unfortunately answer back some other notable vehicles we've got in here, folks. 1966 Beetle Herbie. Uh, this was in the 2005 Lindsay Lohan movie, uh, Herbie Fully Loaded, which is a reboot of the Herbie franchise. We've got an S2000, 2001 model from uh, Too Fast, Too Furious. And we've got a 1932 Ford Flathead Roadster. And this one's quite special. It's from Iron Man. It was in Iron Man 1 and 2. And you can see the scene from the movie just there. And what's even more special about this is it was owned by John Favreau. This is actually part of John Favreau's personal collection. And he's obviously lent it to the Pizza Museum. Uh, John Favreau, of course, actor and director in the Iron Man movies. And then finally, got to show you this really. This is a 1972 Bedford and it's the mystery machine from the Scooby-Doo movie. Uh, which we've got a picture of up there, Freddie Prince Jr., Matthew Lillard, etc. And uh, there you go. You might recognise this 2002 Jag XKR from the Piers Brosnan James Bond movie, Die Another Day, um, in the ice chase scene. This was actually being driven by the villain in that, in pursuit of Bond. You'll see it's got rockets, it's got a Gatling gun turret. Uh, they weren't factory fit options from Jag, so this one has been specially adapted for the movies. Um, but I personally loved Brosnan as Bond. I know he's got his critics, and uh, it's a real pleasure to be seeing this here today. Does the name Memphis Reigns mean anything to you? If so, you're probably aware of what I think is a modern day classic, Gone in 60 Seconds. Now this car here is the one, it's Eleanor. It's the car they spend most of the film trying to get. Um, it's a 69 Mustang, designed by Chip Foos and Steve Stanfield, this one. Um, it's designed to sort of replicate a GT500, uh, as you would expect from any kind of cheap Chip Foos car. It's certainly got some custom touches and little bits of artistic flair added throughout. This is a gorgeous looking car. I actually prefer it in the flesh to in the movie. Um, I love Mustangs personally, and this is one of the nicest ones I can recall seeing. Absolutely epic thing. I only wish I could take it out for a spin, but I think they might get a bit upset if I did. 
You might recognise this chap, of course, it's Lightning McQueen from the Disney movie Cars, Disney Pixar movie Cars. Um, they've seen pretty much every car in here has got a no touch rule, and this one used to have a no touch rule, um, but they had to give up because kids just would not stop touching it. So you'll see there are quite a lot of fingerprints on this. Very cool, it is actually a full scale model and uh, they've obviously used it for prom promotional events around the movies and merchandise and what have you and it now lives here at the Peterson Museum. And obviously we can't talk about Lightning McQueen without talking about Sally. She's also here, 2002 Porsche 911 Carrera. Check it out. If any of you watched the TV show American Hot Rod back in the day, you'll probably be familiar with Boyd Coddington. Um, actually, Chip Foose, who you may all also know, uh, sort of cut his teeth with Boyd Coddington as one of his chief designers for quite a long period of time before Foose went off and set up his own business. Uh, this one here is a 1992. It's called the Aluma Coupe. It was built obviously by Coddington. 320 horsepower, two litre turbocharged engine. It's an inline four. It's obviously one of one, completely custom in every way. One word, stunning. This is a very special 911, particularly for music fans. Uh, this one's called Turbosaurus Rex, and it used to belong to Slash from Guns N' Roses, one of my favorite guitarists. Um, this is a special custom paint. Uh, it's the paint service that Porsche do. It's called Paint to Sample. Uh, this is forest green metallic, and it basically alludes to Slash's love of reptiles, dinosaurs, lizards, snakes, etc. Um, gorgeous looking thing. It's got loads of factory upgrades, 552 brake horsepower, 3.8 litre flat six. Uh, I would take this car home right now, but I think they might get upset about it. The paint job, by the way, I know we've talked about the colour, but it's so well done. Um, it really is a stunning, stunning paint job. And I'd imagine a lot of hours have gone into getting that up to that standard. It looks amazing. Now you might look at this and think, well, it's just a Porsche 911, but this is a very special one. It's a 1976 930 Turbo Carrera. Um, but the, possibly the most interesting thing about this car is it was the last new car purchased by Steve McQueen just four years before he died. Um, the other interesting thing about this, this is a three litre engine. It's a rare non-intercooled early production model um, but just the history of that car, the fact that it was Steve McQueen's last car, means that I would imagine there's a fairly hefty value attached to this one. So here's something you don't see every day. We've got a 1949 Porsche, um, but over here we've got a 1948 356 wooden buck. So back in the day, they would use this wooden buck, put sheet metal on top of it, and then hammer the bejesus out of it until they got the form. Obviously they didn't have you know, really fancy sort of presses. These were handmade cars. And if you can imagine the craftsmanship that goes into that, and then to get a super smooth panel at the end of it, it really gives you an appreciation for these kind of cars and the way they were built and just how different it is from today. Very cool. This is a 1967 custom Porsche 911, uh, like no other really. It was um, commissioned by Texas Porsche dealer William Dick, who wanted a larger Porsche car um, to accommodate all his family basically. So he had it custom built by Troutman and Barnes. He added 21 inches to the car's wheelbase. And I mean, it's just mad. I've never seen anything like it before. Obviously never will again. The paintwork on this one is starting to go in a few areas. Uh, certainly on the sides, it's cleaned up very nicely on the bonnet, not so much. Um, but what a thing, you'll never see another one, folks. Now, of all the cars I've seen at the Peterson Museum, this has to be the most visually impressive thing. First, it's huge, and second, it's stunning, and third, it's completely unique. This is a 1925 Rolls-Royce Phantom One aerodynamic coupe. It's called the Round Door Rolls, a bit of a special project here, but very custom coachwork. You can see the door is completely round, hence the name Round Door Rolls, and just look at that for a bit of engineering, the way the windows open. Obviously, semicircular glass that meet in the middle, absolutely awesome, huge covers over the wheels. And just look at this for a back end, folks. What an absolutely beautiful thing. Let's get it from this side as well. And it looks just as good on this side. 
I'm just absolutely blown away by this thing. It's absolutely huge as well. And there's a little glimpse of this equally stunning interior. And look at that for a set of rims. I bet they don't stop those tyres in quick fit either. And the, if the back end wasn't impressive enough, look at that for an imposing front end. And then we've got this seemingly tiny little rates windscreen, uh, meaning that you'll be completely unaware of the poor people that you're running over in this thing. Look at that chrome work as well. What a piece of design and so well executed. Unbelievable. Now this is a very special car here. It's um, one of possibly only four or five. No one's really entirely sure, but it's a 24 karat gold 1981 DeLorean DMC-12. Uh, 2.85 litre V6 engine. And you might think was well, fairly understanding apart from the fact that it's um, covered in 24 karat gold. And you'd be right, I guess. However, uh, this was built for American Express. It was a promotion for their gold card. And DeLorean, I think originally planned to make about a dozen of these, but in actual fact, ended up making only a handful. No one's really sure how many they did make but I believe this one is number one. 